Today I'm going to teach you how to play Redbone by Childish Gambino as if you were a synth player in a band. To be clear, this is not a tutorial on how to play this as a solo pianist or keyboard player. I think there are plenty of great places on YouTube to find content like that. However, this is more of an explanation of if you were playing this with a party band or another full ensemble, how you would fill the space as a keys player and recreate the synth sounds that are used in the recording. I use stock plugins in main stage to create this, but a lot of it is just using my ear and finding things that I sound like without really using a format or a, a given template. So I'm going to show you how to do this. All right, so we've got our project here, and you can see that I have two keyboards, and each keyboard is split into three basic instruments. Some of the instruments have multiple layers, and we will get into that, but Let's just start at the beginning of the song. So the very first thing you hear in the song is a string sound followed by the intro. The string sound that I created sounds like this. Fairly simple. I just loaded an instance of Apple's sampler and found this soft strings preset that I really liked. I think I might have taken the cutoff down a little bit. And then I also EQ'd out some of the highs and am lightly compressing it using this opto compressor which comes stock with logic like the rest of the plugins i will show you i also sent quite a lot of this signal to a reverb bus which is this large bright reverb you can see it's going there in fact i think i'm sending yes i'm sending every instrument in this song to that bus and you can ignore this one this is just my voice recording um so yes, that's the string sound, and then right after that we get into the actual intro, which sounds like this. And that is the intro. Let's start with the bell sound. The bell sound is made up of two layers. The first layer is a glockenspiel, and I'm gonna mute the other sound for now so you can hear it by itself. So you can hear there's not much body to it. It's mostly just the ting of the transient of the bell. And then this other layer are hand bells and both of these instruments I found in the Logic Sampler. I'm EQing out a lot of the low end on the handbells and boosting the highs, and then on the glockenspiel, I'm just notching out a problem resonant frequency. But together they sound nice and full. Under that is the electric piano. which I'm using the Suitcase Mark I in their ePiano plugin, and then doing a little bit of light compression using the Vintage VCA, and a little bit of EQ, just bringing out some of the low mids. The other sound in the intro is this flute sound, which is also comprised of two layers. The first layer is a pan flute, I found this setting inside of Alchemy. Um, it's just called the Space Pan Flute. And then doing some slight EQ, bringing up the highs, and then I'm doing some vintage opto compression on that as well. A little bit of reverb. The second layer actually doesn't really sound like a flute. It sounds like this. Almost like an ambient pluck. But I actually did find this in a flute preset within Alchemy. It's called the Liquid Breath Flute. But if you go down to these macro controls, I'm using the Pure Flute macro control. And I am cutting out a lot of the high end on the EQ just to give it a very filtered sound. And then some Studio VCA compression. So together, they sound like this. You can hear that the, the plucky sound really just adds a lot of warmth to the flute, and it sounds really nice. So that is the intro. The verse is actually all just electric piano with just different voicings. And you can 
have a lot more flexibility with those, but it's basically the same sound the whole time, so I won't go into that further. Okay, the pre-chorus, which is where they sing, if you want it, you can have it. I have two bass layers that I would be playing on top of an actual bass player, so they are not extremely present in the low, low end, but I did want to add a little bit of that synth bass sound. This is what they sound like. The first of these layers sounds like this. It's got a very classic funk sounding synth filter sweep to it. Um, it's actually called a classic funk synth bass. And I'm doing some very light EQ on it, just cutting out some of the extreme highs and lows and then raising very specific frequencies where I liked where the resonance stuck out. Then I have some slight EQ, or sorry, compression on the Studio FET, which I think sounds really nice on bass, especially for punchy bass sounds. The other bass layer sounds like this. So it's a lot fatter, kind of dirty sounding. That is also an Alchemy preset that is called the Buzz Buzz Phaser Bass. Some of these preset names are great. Like I said, it doesn't have quite as sharp of a resonant filter, but it's got a very fat, phasey sound, and I'm cutting out quite a bit of the highs because I wanted the resonant pinks of the other one to stick through there. And then the compressor is the classic VCA, which adds a lot of warmth to bass tones, in my opinion. So together, the bass sounds like this. Yeah, very interesting texture, in my opinion. And that is the majority of the song. After that, you actually go back to the chorus, which is the same thing as the intro, though. So you can play those exact same things there. The second verse is, again, just the electric piano. And then you do the pre-chorus again, another chorus again. The outro is where things get interesting, and we introduce this last part everything gets really loud and distorted and the guitar lead has a, a melody that really cuts through. In playing this live, I wanted to double that guitar layer. So this is what my lead sounds like. Very harsh, very aggressive. Let's look at the parts. So the first one sounds like this. Yeah, not what you would expect exactly. So this is called the Water Shredder. It's a lead preset in Alchemy, and it's halfway between two macro controls. And then I'm doing quite a bit of processing on it, as you can see. Um, the EQ is fairly simple, just cutting out lows and boosting around 3K. Then I'm compressing it slightly using the Vintage Opto again. And then there's a Bit Crusher. And the Bit Crusher just adds a little bit of warmth. It actually takes some of the high end out of it. So this is with the bit crusher. And we'll bypass it. It sounds like this. So yeah, a little bit more of an intense high end, but I wanted the other lead sound to take care of the high end, so I didn't want that there. And then got a little bit of flanging going on. Nothing crazy there. The other lead sound sounds like this. Much brighter, much more aggressive, and has a sharper transient. This alchemy preset is called the Sweet Lead, and it's on the aggressive macro control. The EQ is cutting out a lot of the low end. Um, you might look at this and say, that's cutting out like all of the body of the sound. Well, yes, it is. Partly is because some of that is being filled by the other lead sound. Part of it is that I knew this would be doubled by an actual guitar, which would take care of a lot of the mids. So I wasn't worried about filling that space. So the EQ is doing that, and then I have a vintage fat compressor and a little bit of reverb. So together, the leads sound like this. <laughs> to create that um, pitch bending effect, I'm just using my pitch bend wheel and starting on the note below where the melody starts. So I'm starting on C, even though the melody really starts with D and then I bend up to it, so it sounds like this. 
Yeah, pretty cool. So that is how I would play Redbone by Childish Gambino in the context of a full band. I hope you found this helpful, and I will see you next time.